Hey guys, it's Dr. McGlasson. I promised you that I would put up some assistance to walk you through these different pricing scenarios. And you know, we already have one of them out of the way for homework you had already done scenario one, the perfectly competitive firm that is making money, that has a price that's greater than average total cost. I know that you have already done that. It was in episode 26. That's the example that was shown in that video. But just really quick, that was the producer whose price was above their average total cost, which meant that they were gonna be making a profit. So in the long term, other firms saw them making a profit, started coming into the industry. It drove the industry supply upward, brought price downward, and in the long run, they end up just breaking even. I know that this says that I have four more pricing scenarios and people look at this and they say, oh man, I have all these graphs I have to memorize. It's not memorization, it's understanding that logical process that I gave you, the handout that had the step-by-step -step logical process guideline, because really all of these started exactly the same way. They all start with the underlying cost curves. The only thing that's different from case to case is where that price line is. So it could move up, it could move down. Is it gonna be above the curves? Is it gonna be below the curves? But the price line is the only difference in any of these other than that, once you tell the producer where their price line is, then they can say, all right, well, given that price line that I can't do anything about, how much will I decide to produce at that amount? Will I be making a profit? And then you keep going with the steps in that handout. So if I'm looking at scenario number two, scenario number two is actually our worst case scenario for the producer. They have a price that is so low that it's below both the average variable cost and the average total cost. So if I put that price line in, it's gonna be below those two cost curves. And then I can see in the diagram, where's my marginal revenue equal to my marginal cost? That gives me my quantity. Then I can show, well, price times quantity is my total revenue. Average total cost times quantity is my total cost, and I can see what the difference is. And here I can see that this producer is losing quite a substantial amount of money. So you have to start asking yourself, if I'm losing money, should I shut down? Well, what happens if you shut down? If you shut down and choose not to produce anything, so I can choose Q-Star and lose the amount that I've shown here, or I can shut down, then what happens? If I shut down, that means I'm producing zero. Well, if I produce zero, how much total revenue am I bringing in? Well, I'm not bringing in any because I'm not selling anything. But what's my total cost? I'm dealing with the short run here. I can see that I have a gap between variable cost and total cost, which means there are some fixed costs. So even if I produce nothing, I have to pay those fixed costs, which means if I choose to produce nothing, I'm going to lose my total fixed costs, okay? So then the question is, all right, well, would I rather produce Q star and lose the amount that I've shown here? Would I rather lose my fixed cost? And in this case, you're losing so much if you produce that you're actually better off to just shut things down and just lose the fixed costs. Of course, in the long run, you're not gonna stay someplace where you're losing money. So in the long run, you're gonna try to get out. Well, this looks just the opposite of what we saw with perfect competition where they were making money. In scenario one, the firm was making money, other firms came in, my industry supply shifted to the right, and so the price went up until that price was exactly equal to the average total cost, and then they were just breaking even. Well, here, just the opposite happens. People start to leave because they don't wanna be here losing money. So that means my industry supply shifts to the left, it drives the price up, and the firms that are left behind are gonna be able to break even eventually because that price is gonna keep going up as people leave. People keep leaving as long as they're losing money. When the losses stop, when they are breaking even, they stop leaving. So the price goes just up to the point where they're gonna break even, so long run, zero economic profit. Scenario number three, again, it's just a question of where the price line is, says average variable cost is below my price, average total cost is above my price, so I know that that price line is gonna go right through the middle of those two cost curves. I can see that my cost per unit is higher than my price, which means I'm definitely losing money, but does that automatically mean that I should shut down in the short run and leave in the long run? 
what I find in scenario number three is, yes, I'm losing money, but look what happens if I say, well, let me shut down. If I shut down, I'm gonna lose my total fixed costs as we saw previously, right? I'm bringing in zero revenue, but I still have to pay the fixed cost. If I lose the total fixed cost, which is that area between average total and average fixed, that's actually a bigger loss than what I would be losing if I produced. So producer number three actually says, yes, I'm losing money, but I'm gonna keep producing at Q star because I'm losing less money. I'm a loss minimizer. But still, in the long run, nobody wants to stay where they're losing money. So the firms that can get out, get out. I'll find that the industry supply shifts to the left. The price gets driven upward. How far? Just until people start breaking even. That's when they stop leaving the industry. What about scenario four? This one's a little bit of an odd one because my price is exactly equal to this low point on my average variable cost. And I probably mentioned in the previous video that the average total and average variable costs always cross the marginal at their minimum. So the bottom of that U is right where the marginal cost passes through. So clearly they're losing money, right? I look where marginal revenue equals marginal cost and I find that my price line is below my average total cost. So here's my area of loss. So maybe I wanna shut down. Well, look what happens if I shut down. If I shut down, I'm gonna lose my total fixed cost, which is this area here between my average total cost and my average variable cost. There's my total fixed cost. It's exactly the same amount. In case number four, this is referred to as the shutdown point because it's really this, it's almost like a pass-through point, kind of a knife edge point. If the price had been any higher, I would have been in scenario three and I would have clearly known, okay, I'll keep producing to lose less money. If I had been in scenario two, I would clearly know I'm losing so much, I'm better to shut down. But here, from a profit standpoint, it just doesn't make a difference. I'm gonna lose exactly the same amount of money whether I go into work or whether I stay home and pull the blankets over my head. So it's gonna be up to some other criteria other than the profit because the profit's exactly the same either way. You know, if you say I would just as soon lose the same amount of money by sending everybody home, turning out the lights and staying in bed. Or you might say, no, I would rather lose that amount of money and keep my employees in their jobs for a few more months where they can look for something new until I leave the industry. At any rate, doesn't really matter which way you go there, but in the long run, anybody losing money is gonna get out. So again, my industry supply would fall, driving the price up. That price goes up enough so that the remaining firms can break even. And I've got that long run profit of zero again. The last scenario, scenario five, says that your price is equal to your average total cost. So it is gonna be right here, tangent to the bottom of my average total cost curve. And of course that means I'm making exactly zero profit, right? I'm breaking even, this is my break even point. Well, if all I'm doing is breaking even and making zero, would I be better off to shut down? And of course the answer is no, my profit is zero dollars and I'll come back to that in just a second. But if I shut down, I'm gonna lose my total fixed cost. But remember what it actually means to have zero profit. To have zero economic profit means that you can cover all of your direct costs. You can cover your labor, you can cover your capital, you can cover the electric bill, you can cover raw materials, and also have enough money left over to pay yourself as the business owner enough to cover your opportunity cost. So you can pay yourself exactly as much as your next best alternative. So why would you leave if by leaving, you're gonna make the same as you're making here? So remember, zero profit doesn't mean that you're actually going broke, you're not making nothing. You're just covering not only your direct costs, but also your opportunity costs. So you'll make as much as what your next best alternative would have been. Long run, what's gonna happen? If you're breaking even, is anybody gonna come in? No, because they're looking for positive profits. Is anybody gonna leave? No, because they're not losing money and they're doing as well as they could at their next best alternative. So scenario number five, you're actually already in your long run equilibrium position. So if I look at these, they all end exactly the same way with this producer just breaking even in the long run. And you know, as I mentioned, if I'm making zero profit in the long run, why would I ever stay here? Well, because it's zero economic profit, which means that you actually are making some money for yourself. It's not a lot of money, but you know, it's equal to your next best alternative. 
before we go, I wanted to show you one last thing here. I had you label these very precisely, have you label all these graphs, and I said I wanted to see the price and the marginal revenue and the marginal cost and the average total cost and the average variable cost, and I want to see the industry demand and I want to see the industry supply and I want to see the firm's demand. Where is the firm's supply curve? I don't see that anywhere here. But if I think back to what a supply curve is, a supply curve is all the combinations of prices and quantities supplied to the market. Well, isn't that what you just did for me? If you go through all five of these cases, you've considered all the possible pricing scenarios and at each one said, here's how much I'll produce. So let's go back to those cost curves for a second. If I had my, oh, what was it? My scenario one price, that high price. You told me, yes, we're gonna produce. They're making a profit. Where are you gonna produce? You're gonna produce right where the price line crosses the marginal cost. Okay, well, what happens when it gets a little bit lower? Well, I'm still making money, so I'm still going to produce where it costs. Well, what about when you're just breaking even? That was scenario five. You said in scenario five, yes, I'll keep producing. I don't want to shut down. I'm breaking even. I'm not losing money, so I'm going to keep producing. What about when the price drops below average total cost, but not below average variable? So it's between average variable and average total. That was scenario three. So at this price level, we said, yes, we're losing money, but it's less money than we would lose if we produce nothing. So let's keep going. As I decrease further, what happens when it bottoms out at that minimum of the average variable cost? That was scenario four, where price is exactly equal to average variable. Do I produce or do I not produce? And that's where we said, well, it doesn't actually really matter because you're gonna lose the same amount either way. That was my shutdown point. And then if the price goes below that, I'm into scenario two territory where the price is so low that I definitely wanna close down in the short run and get out as soon as I can. So if I look at this, what I'm gonna find is that the firm's supply curve is its marginal cost. It's not the entire marginal cost because I don't wanna be producing at a price below that minimum average variable cost but the firm's supply curve will be its marginal cost curve as long as you are above the minimum average variable cost. And I think in homework practice number 26, there was a question like that where it said, you know, when are you gonna keep producing the short run? I'll keep producing as long as I'm above my minimum average variable cost. So that's your five scenarios. I would go through these to make sure that you understand them, but then make sure you've got that one page summary sheet on hand, take extra notes on it if you want to. That's gonna make your life a lot easier when you go in to take quiz number five, all right? So finish up your pricing scenarios. Next week, you're gonna complete quiz number five and get started on section number six, which is monopoly and regulation.